My name is Sophie Adenau and I'm from France. So well, like many other people, uh, I had this little girl's dream and uh, dreaming about space and I found it was really fascinating. And I would say that since I was a little girl, I always had this curiosity of an explorer. I wanted to discover, learn new things. And when I grew older, I really had this driver for science, research and technology. I really always liked learning new stuff, building stuff, um, learning about science. And, and so it felt like the natural uh, place to, to go towards. I became an aviator. I wanted to explore the limit of the second dimension. After this, I decided to become a test pilot, a helicopter test pilot. I wanted to explore the limits of technology, go further beyond, and uh, so now it, it seems like a continuity to me. I grew up in the middle of France, in Burgundy, and uh, I then decided to go study science. I studied engineering, actually. I graduated from uh, Super Lycée in Toulouse. And then I also have a Master of Science from MIT in the USA. I started to work at Airbus Helicopter on the design of helicopter cockpits. And I loved so much the cockpits of helicopters that I decided I wanted to make them my desk, my office. In the French Air and Space Force, I flew rescue and transport mission with incredible teams. And I really loved this operational part of my career. Afterwards, I really wanted to explore a new area, a technological area. And I decided to apply for becoming a test pilot. I went to the UK for my training and I came back for my job as a test pilot uh, to the flight test center southwest of France. Um, it was also really interesting into, in terms of teamwork, in terms of uh, further the boundaries of, of technology. I really loved this part as well. And so now I'm a, I've been applying to become an astronaut and. I'm also so excited about the, all the uncertainty to come and all the, the really great missions that are coming. I really love sports, uh, especially mountain sports. Everything that is outdoor, exploring in the nature, I love it. And uh, I also do a lot of yoga. It's very grounding for me and uh, I think it's a very good way to just settle things down and, and just um, regenerate energy before the next adventure. I was deeply happy. Um, it was a long process uh, which required a lot of energy, a lot of preparation, a lot of thoughts as well and uh, a lot of teamwork with family members helping to prepare as well and I'm thankful for everyone who helped me. So I was deeply happy, yes. Um, the role of as an astronaut is one piece into a big uh, human adventure which gathers thousands of people. And I really think the astronaut is just here to go and explore uh, what, what's happening behind and come back towards his peers with a new perspective and also new innovative technologies which are being developed under um, in, in microgravity in the International Space Station. So uh, these new technologies can benefit to everyone. And so this is the role of the explorer, just being at the end of a long chain of engineering and scientific people exploring and coming back with all these new things and new perspectives. I'd love to um, participate to all these missions. Of course, all this is completely new to me. And so it's kind of difficult to vision all these adventure uh, to come. But yes, it, it's fascinating and I, I'm fully ready to, to, and determined to, to work towards all these missions and contribute and, and, and share everything I learned with uh, everyone. A message to the young generation um, dare to believe in yourself, dare to have dreams and dare to just go 
uh, further a step beyond even if you think there is a ceiling glass above and if you're afraid because you don't know this new world or this new technology, go and learn and, 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 and there will be many things coming out of uh, your adventure. My name is Pablo Álvarez and I'm from Spain. Well, the space is that one thing that excites everyone. So from, from little kids to grown-ups, but I, I must say it was my, my dreams, is my childhood. And uh, well, I, when I saw the opportunity, uh, I thought it's one you have on thought, please uh, make the best of it. So I grew up in León which is a tiny city in the northwest of Spain, close to the mountains. Coldest place in, in Spain, probably. <laughs> uh, I studied aerospace engineering uh, there in, in León, and then I did a master in the Warsaw University of Technology in Poland. And then I started working for Airbus uh, in 2012, where I got the opportunity to work in many different programs from aircraft, like A320, A330, A350, to uh, space, where I was the, uh, had the honor of being the ExoMars rover architect uh, based in UK. And I was also living for some periods of my life in France. So uh, truly, since I graduated, I, I've managed to, to live in different countries and I, I feel I'm European at heart. I love sports. I, I like running, I, I completed a few half marathons, triathlons, I, I enjoyed riding my bike, but, but also hiking, uh, going to the mountains and so on. Well, uh, extremely happy and honored to, to be part of this group. So the, the first reaction was very emotional. It's even, uh, I was expecting a call, of course, but uh, well, that confirmation was uh, something else. I, I couldn't hold my tears and I, I was extremely happy. Follow your dreams. Uh, never think that something is not possible. Um, I, I am the living proof that uh, dreams can actually come true. And don't let anyone uh, tell you that you cannot achieve something. My name is Megan Christian and I'm from the United Kingdom. I think being an astronaut is just about the coolest job in the world and I think that's from so many different perspectives and it's so unique. It's a really special kind of thing to do that not many people get to and being able to you know, advanced research in these really highly technological fields, um, putting forward important uh, scientific research. And I think every kid really wants to be an astronaut. So uh, it started back when I was, when I was a kid as well. And uh, an astronaut came to my school actually. Um, and just from them, I've always been completely fascinated by it. So I was born in the United Kingdom, but when I was fairly young, um, I moved to Australia with my family. So I did most of my schooling in Australia. I went to university at the University of New South Wales. I studied a Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Chemistry. I also did my PhD there, uh, working on nanomaterials for hydrogen storage. And from then I wanted to move back to Europe. So I found a postdoc in Bologna in Italy, and uh, I've been working there ever since at the National Research Council. Uh, still working on nanomaterials, uh, material science basically. But on the other hand, I've also spent some time doing um, atmospheric physics and meteorology research in Antarctica. And that has been definitely one of my career highlights. Um, and that's because I am a fairly adventurous person, I would say. Um, I enjoy adventurous sports like uh, via ferrata, which is a kind of climbing, uh, scuba diving, horse riding, all sorts of uh, white, white water rafting as well. Uh, so that's on the one hand. On the other hand, I enjoy time relaxing, knitting, sewing, um, singing. Uh, I really enjoy singing, playing guitar.
it was kind of a surreal feeling to be uh, called, to get that call uh, to be part of the astronaut class of 2022. Um, it's something that I've been working for for a long time, working towards, let's say, for a long time. Um, I mean, the selection process itself has been quite long and there's been a lot, of, uh, a lot of anxious waiting. And so it was just really exciting to finally hear that that, that, that was my fate. <laughs> I think it's a really exciting time for, for human spaceflight, not just for the national agencies here at the European Space Agency, but also because there's a lot of commercial um, organizations coming through, which gives a whole lot more opportunities. I think for Europe, it's a really interesting time because we're heading towards that uh, independent access to space, which is so important. Uh, so there's really a lot of exciting things coming up and I'm looking forward to being a, being a part of that, uh, not just ISS, um, but also the moon and beyond. To the young people, I would say follow your dreams and look out for the dreams that you didn't expect as well. For example, when I went to Antarctica, I, I didn't know that that was going to be something that would happen, but it was one of the best things that's ever happened to me. So look out for those opportunities as well and, and take them, grab them. My name is Antia Comellini and I come from Italy. So I've always been fascinated since I was a child from uh, flight and eventually space flight. And uh, this has been something that was uh, quite uh, irrational, I cannot explain why it was a uh, uh, flight and not something else. Uh, but then uh, my life choices bring me close to space because I enrolled, uh, when I was 19, the uh, uh, University for Aerospace Engineering. And by knowing this domain, I really was able to understand that this was the right place for me. And uh, day by day, I, uh, um, the desire to contribute to it uh, grew inside me. And, this is why I eventually ended up uh, applying for this position. So I grew up in Chiari, a small town in northern Italy, and uh, I uh, enrolled uh, the uh, Politecnico di Milano for aerospace engineer program when I was 19. Uh, then, uh, since I was fascinated by space, I continued with the master in space engineering, and I was uh, at I also had the possibility to do an exchange, a double degree program in France, in Toulouse, at uh, Isai Supero. And thanks to this, I uh, uh, had the possibility to do an internship uh, uh, in Thales Linea Space in Cannes, uh, where I was offered to continue doing a PhD on the subject of uh, autonomous rendezvous for, auto for a spacecraft, which is quite a trend topic at the moment. And uh, two years ago, I wanted to give myself a uh, another challenge, so I decided to uh, uh, apply for a position as a flight dynamics engineer. Uh, so I ended up in Darmstadt uh, at ESOC, the European Space Operations Center, where I worked on interplanetary missions. It was very fun. And uh, I just recently came back uh, in Cannes at Thales Arena Space to work as a guidance, navigation and control engineer. I've always been uh, very active in sport since I was a child, and my favorite sport and that I have practice with quite a fair level uh, has been orienteering, which is uh, uh, quite a not common sport, but uh, very nice uh, and everybody should try it. It was uh, more a, a relief <laughs> because uh, this was a very long process and uh, it, uh, we didn't receive the notification just the day after applying, but it was a process in which we were first passing the screening, then passing the psychometric testing, then passing the psychological testing, then the medical, then the panel. So you get closer and closer to your dream, and when you finally receive the last call that you are invited to Paris, it's more a sense of relief, like, okay, <laughs> this is happening. <laughs> I see myself uh, trying to give the maximum contribution that I can give to space in Europe. That the, the, this is really the motive that also pushed me to apply to this position, but even before to be a space engineer. And um, 
as for uh, whoever I will be the most exciting to me to see myself, uh, uh, this is the future that is going to tell, whether it is going to be the ISS or other commercial station or eventually the moon, I don't know, but for me what is important is to know that I am really contributing to this big community that is space in Europe. My message, uh, which is very subjective, it's uh, close up to my experience, is that you don't necessarily have to dream about becoming an astronaut. What you have to do is really um, to take step by step and work hard and try to um, focus on long-term goals, uh, even if they are not uh, well defined, but just trying to give the future yourself uh, the best uh, possibility. And this can be done by working today. So just uh, dream big and try to find your place uh, in the world. My name is Rosemary Coogan and I'm from the UK. Oh, space has always fascinated me. My current job is actually to look at how galaxies grow and evolve with time. But I particularly applied to the space program because I really wanted to get hands on with contributing and learning the most that we can from space. I think it's really important to understand really where we come from, the conditions from life, and how the human body reacts when those conditions change. So I'm really excited to do that by going to space, hopefully inspiring other people to do the same, and contributing towards ESA's goals in that way. So I grew up in the UK, and during my masters I studied physics, and particularly astrophysics. I spent a lot of time also during my university years as a Royal Naval Reserve, so learning how to um, sail and operate a naval ship. And from there I went, went on to work briefly in industry in the software and robotics and then on, went on to do a PhD in astrophysics. And that has eventually led me now to be an astrophysicist for the French space agency, CNES. In my free time, I used to do a lot of water sports, so things like kayaking and sailing, and particularly rowing as well at university. But nowadays I've been doing more scuba diving and cycling and hiking, particularly in the mountains around Munich, where I was previously based. And on a rainy day, I like to do cooking and playing board games with my friends. Well, it was a real privilege to get the call. I was incredibly excited. I think there's been so many great candidates in this selection and so many people applied, and I feel extremely lucky to, to be in this position. I really want to make the most of this opportunity to, to learn as much as I can and to give as much as I can. It's, uh, yeah, very, very exciting. <laughs> I think what excites me most about human exploration, I suppose there's two parts to it. When I think about the ISS and a lot of the things that we do on space stations, I think about how it's where we can experience physics under completely, in a completely different way than we've ever experienced on Earth. Of course, all the physical laws still apply, but we don't see anything like that down here, and that would be, for me, a, a really thrilling thing. In terms of going to the moon, it really excites me because I feel as though it's it's almost stepping back in time, in a way, to, to be on this rocky body that represents how the solar system was formed and what we can learn from ourselves. So that's really one of the things I'm most looking forward to. In terms of where I see myself, I really just want to help ESA reach its goals. I don't know if I'll be going to the ISS or going to the moon or helping plan for activities for other astronauts. There's, there's such a wide range of things that an astronaut can do that don't involve being in space. So it's just a case of, of seeing what's needed and when. I think if I, if I had some messages for people today or young children today particularly who are interested in space and science, it would be to, to absolutely pursue it, to find out all of the possibilities because there are so many jobs that exist in the space sector and within all the different types of science. There's something there for everybody, something you'll be good at and something you will enjoy, particularly if you think you're interested in it now. So ask as many questions as possible, get in touch with whoever you can and really just go for it. My name is Sara García Alonso and I am from Spain.
Honestly, I have never considered seriously to move to the space sector and become, of course, becoming an astronaut. But when I find out about the job position and I start reading about the duties of an astronaut, about the, the, the skills, the, the things that this profession entails, I was like um, kind of surprised and really appealed about this job. And as long as I was digging in, I was more and more enthusiastic about it. And somehow I felt like my skill set, all the steps that I have done during my professional and personal career, somehow had prepared me for that position. So I decided to give it a chance. And here we are. I'm from León, from a small city in the northwest of Spain. I study biotechnology there. And then I specialize in biomedical research. And then I decided to get my PhD in the, by the University of Salamanca. I have a PhD in molecular biology, focused on cancer and translational medicine. And I have been working as a scientist in scientific labs for the last 12 years. Now I'm managing a small team focused on drug discovery and lung cancer and pancreatic cancer. And regarding my hobbies, I love challenging myself constantly, both mentally and physically. I love learning new things, new skills. I'm a very sportive woman and I try everything from yoga to crossfit to Krav Maga, <laughs> bungee jumping, skydiving. I love trying every kind of, of stuff and learning new things. Well, very surprised, uh, honestly, because I have met so um, many amazing people throughout this selection process. So people so inspiring that um, becoming one of the chosen ones is like a privilege. I, I'm, it's like a dream come true. <laughs> I really couldn't believe it, but I'm glad to be here. Well, I think a new era for space exploration is coming. And there is a lot of benefit to, to get through this global endeavor we are facing now. Because all the technology that is going to be developed for getting a sustainable presence in, in the low Earth orbit and in the moon is going to bring so much benefit to all society and companies. I, I just want to contribute to that with the mission that I'm assigned in the case of I have an, a flight opportunity and doing all the scientific uh, projects and research that I'm supposed to do. So, well, I just want to contribute and make a good task. It is an amazing profession. Doing STEM careers uh, opens a lot of different opportunities and it entails a, a work in a multidisciplinary and multicultural environment, which is very uh, fruitful and rewarding for all of us. And being driven by your curiosity and your ambition to expand your knowledge is something very beautiful. So I encourage all the young people to, to pursue it. My name is Raphael Liégeois and I am from Belgium. Well, I think that uh, the primary reason is that it has been a dream since I am a child. And uh, even though I knew it was very unlikely to happen, it has always been a dream. And then, more broadly, I would also say that what fascinates me about space exploration is that it's the next frontier of human exploration. So I'm from Belgium. I uh, grew up most of the time in Namur, in the French-speaking part of uh, Belgium, and I studied engineering, biomedical engineering in Liège, uh, also in the French-speaking part of, uh, of Belgium. There I got a PhD in neuroscience, and I did a first research uh, stay, postdoctoral stay in Singapore, still to study how brain functions in health and disease. And I am now uh, doing still the same thing in uh, Switzerland uh, as a research and teaching fellow at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology. 
So this is for the um, CV part of the answer. Now about the hobbies, I would say that um, I like a lot of uh, outdoors activities and maybe the most um, relevant to this uh, position, to this application, would be the flying experience that I have. So I do ballooning, hot air ballooning, gas ballooning, and I also have a glider uh, license. So when I received the call uh, from the Director General, I was of course ecstatic but also a bit uh, hesitant on whether it was a positive or a negative outcome. So I was waiting for the words to come and the final decision, uh, well the final uh, outcome to be uh, received. I was of course super happy and the first thing I did was to share it with my wife because we've uh, built it as a common project and uh, I wanted to share that news with her and it's of course uh, incredibly uh, humbling to be part of this uh, new class. Well, I would say that human exploration is part of human nature. As far as uh, humans have been around, they have tried to explore new places and today the final frontier, the new frontier, uh, is space. So of course, moon is extremely exciting. I grew up reading Tintin, going to the moon, and when I see uh, and read about that, it brings me back a lot of uh, incredible feelings of adventure, exploration. So I feel extremely privileged to being given the opportunity to take part into these uh, exciting endeavors. Well, I would like to say that uh, science and space are fascinating. Science is beautiful and uh, more than being beautiful, it is also one key tool that we can leverage to address the challenges that humanity today is facing as a whole and space has his, its place uh, there to take and as a, again a tool to solve these challenges. My name is John McFall and I'm from the United Kingdom. I've always been hugely interested in science generally uh, and space exploration has always been on my radar but having had a motorcycle accident when I was 19, like wanting to join the armed forces, having a, a disability was always a contraindication uh, to doing that. And then uh, in early 2021 when the uh, advert for an astronaut uh, with a physical disability came out, I read the person specification and what it entailed. Uh, and I thought, wow, this is such a huge, interesting opportunity. And I thought that I would be a very good candidate to help ESA answer the question that they were, they were asking. Can we get someone with a physical disability into space? And I felt compelled to apply. I grew up in the south of, of the UK. Uh, originally, uh, I always wanted to join the army, uh, and that was my, what well, my life was sort of tailored around. I came from a military family. I went away travelling at the end of my teenage years, and unfortunately had a motorcycle accident, uh, which resulted in the amputation of my, my right leg. I had a place at university to do sports and exercise science anyway after that, and I still took that place up. Um, I just happened to be an amputee. And then following that, I, uh, I taught myself to run again, and I got back into sport, because that was a huge part of my life. Subsequent to that, I, uh, I became a Paralympic athlete. And alongside that, I also um, uh, was studying a master's degree in sports and exercise science. Uh, I was fortunate, fortunate enough to take my sporting career uh, all the way to the Paralympic Games in Beijing, uh, where I won a bronze medal. <clears throat> uh, and then I realized that I couldn't be an athlete for my whole life. I, I probably needed to get a proper job. Uh, so I thought, well, what, what would I have liked to have done had I been 15, 16 and, and not wanted to join the army? And that was when I, I thought about medicine. It, just the, the idea of learning so much more about uh, the way stuff works, how we work, but applying it and doing something practical. So at 28, I ended up going back to medical school and studied medicine for, for five years in Cardiff uh, and uh, graduated in 2014. And I'm now... Um, uh, an orthopaedic surgical trainee coming towards the end of my um, registrar training um, and hopefully uh, aiming to be a consultant in the, in the future. Uh, I'm married. Uh, I've got three children who are nine, eight and five. 
um, and I still live in the south uh, of the UK. I'm a big fan of mountain biking. Mountain biking and running really are the main things I like to do. So just for me, running is a big part of my life. And uh, I was always a runner before I lost my leg. And being able to run again as an amputee was such a huge uh, an important thing for me. And so that's kind of what I do on a, a reasonably regular basis, just to keep myself fit and healthy, really. But uh, I also do quite a bit of mountain biking. I was incredibly excited and uh, proud of myself that I'd got through the selection process. Uh, it'd been quite a whirlwind uh, experience, and given that uh, as an amputee, I'd never thought that being an astronaut was a possibility. Uh, so excitement was, was a huge uh, emotion, uh, and I look forward to uh, what the future holds. I think specifically, uh, I've got quite an interesting uh, focus or point of view uh, for human space exploration, being the first cohort of uh, astronauts with a physical disability. Not only have we got to undergo astronaut training, but we've got to undergo astronaut training and work out what it is about having a physical disability that makes it tricky and overcome those hurdles. So it adds an, an additional layer of complexity to that. I'm extremely excited about um, using the skills that I have for problem solving, um, identifying uh, issues um, and overcoming obstacles that allow people with a physical disability to, uh, to perform the job uh, equally to their able-bodied counterpart. Furthermore, I'm interested in actually the science of, of space exploration, what actually happens to someone with a, a lower limb amputation in microgravity, what happens to their residual limb, and the, the science around that sort of thing. How does exercising in space differ? So all sorts of things like that. Uh, so there's, there's, there's lots that I'm passionate and interested about. I think the message that I would give uh, to future generations is that science is for everyone and space travel hopefully can be for everyone. My name is Andrea Patassa and I'm from Italy. Becoming an astronaut is of course something that uh, always fascinated me as a kid especially. Uh, I wanted to travel to space, uh, try the uh, weightlessness. It's, Something that, of course, uh, gave me uh, goosebumps only thinking about it. But uh, when I was a little kid, it was, some, like, uh, it was something uh, that felt as, real, felt as real as becoming Spider-Man. It was something unreachable. Um, but then over the years, uh, with my uh, profession in the Air Force and meeting, I had the chance of meeting astronauts uh, that helped me, um, realizing that it's something tangible and something that could be done. So I, I threw the application and. I'm here. I was born in Spoleto, a very a small town in the center of Italy. I grew up there and uh, I attended school there till the high school. And then in 2010, I joined the Air Force and uh, I joined the academy uh, in Pozzuoli. That's where I got my uh, bachelor and master's degree. And then I started pilot training soon after uh, finishing the, the academy initially in the United States, and then I finished the pilot training uh, in Italy, and I was selected as a Eurofighter pilot. And so I moved to uh, Tuscany, a very beautiful area, a city called Grosseto, where my base was. And I flew Eurofighter there for about three years. After that, I was selected by the Air Force uh, to become a test pilot. And right now, I'm training as a test pilot in Edwards, California, at a US Air Force Test Pilot School. And I'll be done in like three weeks. Uh, I'm about to graduate, soon to be a test pilot, and then I'll go back to Italy uh, after more than one year. My hobbies, I love flying, of course. It's, it's a job, but it's also a passion. That's something that uh, I really love. And I also love to uh, hiking, like being in the, nat being, uh, in the nature, uh, mountain biking. Um, and also, I have a motorbike, and I love riding my motorbike. And also, quite big... Uh, uh, amount of sports, all at a, an amateur level, but I love uh, soccer, I play tennis, I run sometimes. I still have to realize it, I guess. Uh, it's something that felt unreal. Uh, it's, I, 
I could only dream of being in this position, but uh, when I found out it was real, uh, I know it. I still have to to realize the situation and what's happening right now. To be honest. The big uh, thing in space exploration right now is, of course, the moon. Uh, everyone dreams about that. The moon is the dream, and that's uh, for me as well. Um, of course, every other opportunity in space would be great. The ISS would be an incredible opportunity. And whatever ESA um, uh, has for me, of course, I'll take everything I can, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. I would say, um, don't uh, give up your dreams. Keep, uh, keep aiming at, at the big goal. Keep aiming at your dreams because I would, I would have never imagined myself in this position like three years ago or like two months ago either. And, but with passion and uh, keeping focused on the objective, everything is reachable. My name is Carmen Posnik and I'm from Austria. Well, I always wanted to be an explorer. And uh, what fascinated me most um, when I was a child were those stories of old heroic exploration of Amundsen and uh, Shackleton going to the South Pole, for example. And I realized that the modern day equivalent to that is human space exploration. And I think it's a very a meaningful way to contribute to um, how humanity shapes its future and to um, do excellent research that will benefit all of us in the end. I grew up in Klagenfurt, which is a small city in the south of Austria, and I was always interested by uh, life sciences and especially by um, medicine. So I went on to study um, medicine in Graz, which is another city in Austria, and became a medical doctor, and I did my general practitioner training in Vienna. Um, afterwards, I realized that I really like medicine, I like working as a medical doctor, um, I like the, the human connections you make during that time, but what was always missing a bit um, was doing research. Um, and I got, during my studies, very fascinated with um, space medicine research and how the human body changes when we go to space. So during my studies, I became interested in space medicine research and um, I decided I wanted to be more involved in that and I wanted also to follow up this old fascination of, of exploration and adventure. So I applied to the European Space Agency to be the ESA medical doctor in a, an isolated base in Antarctica in Concordia Station. And I went on to do this for a year in 2018. I was isolated in this base for 13 months with 12 other people. And I had an amazing time there. I learned how to live in isolation and confinement and um, in minus 80 degrees cold weather. <laughs> and I loved it. So I decided this is for me. I want to continue exploration, adventure, and combine this with research and medicine, of course. Um, so after my experience in Antarctica, I decided to stay in this field. And I'm now doing a PhD in space physiology at the University of Innsbruck. So I live in Innsbruck, so of course my hobbies kind of uh, um, combined with the nature around. I really like to go hiking and mountaineering, um, also kayaking for a bit. And um, to balance this out, I also like to do yoga. Um, and I like reading and writing. Um, I wrote a book about my time in Antarctica, and I'm now following up on that and to keep my skills alive. <laughs> Yeah, I felt um, it was a lot of emotions at the same time. Um, I was just teaching at the time and I had to go outside to take the call um, because I was expecting a French number to call. Um, but I didn't know, of course, if it was a yes or a no. So those few seconds between um, the introduction of the DG on this side and him saying congratulations, I did not know what was going to happen. So it was, yeah. It was, um, my heart was racing and, uh, and uh, I was hoping. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's extremely exciting and, and uh, humbling, of course, to be part of this amazing group of people. Yeah, I think we are living in very exciting times. We're going back to the moon. We might in the next decades also go to Mars. And uh, I think 
I really want to make a, make a contribution to that. Um, whether it's small or bigger, I mean, Isa will have to decide. And I think wherever my, my skills and my abilities fit in there, I want to give all I can to advance human space exploration. I think that if you choose a, a career in science or engineering or technologies, it's a really, um, it's very exciting times for these fields. There is a lot of um, advancement there. And I think that um, this is a really, a really good way to make a meaningful impact um, on how we treat our planet, on how we shape the future of our society. And I think if, you, if this is something you are passionate about, um, don't hesitate to follow this passion and um, yeah, make it your life. My name is Arnaud Prost and I am from France. Uh, in fact, I have always dreamt to become an astronaut. Uh, the one aspect, if I was to pick one, that fascinates me the most is uh, to be able to go into outer space, extravehicular activity. Uh, that's my personal uh, admiration, but also the, the possibility to have uh, such a huge and beneficial impact on society by conveying uh, science uh, messages, by supporting exploration in a good and long-term way. Yes, clearly, I think it's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Uh, the last uh, call for applicants was in 2008, so quite a long time ago. Um, and it really resonated with my passion for space, my passion for extreme environments. Uh, I was under the feeling that uh, all the things that I have enjoyed the most in my professional life they would be put at a whole new level as an astronaut. I am talking about international collaboration, uh, technicality, risk mitigation, uh, pushing the boundaries of science, of exploration, all of that, it, it seemed to me like something I would definitely enjoy on an everyday basis. So I grew up uh, in Marseille, in the south of France, near the Mediterranean Sea. Um, about my hobby, I'm very much into scuba diving. Uh, I have spent most of my time uh, as a kid underwater, spearfishing, freediving, and then scuba diving after that. Uh, I am also very much uh, into rugby. Uh, that's one of my passion. Um, I have played quite a lot at uh, both in clubs and universities. Uh, as from my uh, background, I graduated from Ecole Polytechnique uh, and uh, Isaïe Supero. Uh, there I did a dual degree uh, with the University of uh, Toulouse Paul Sabatier. Um, a Master of uh, Science in Astrophysics. Uh, I spent six months in the US as a Jet Propulsion Laboratory. That was my end of study internship uh, of uh, Ecole Polytechnique, and I spent six months uh, in Russia as well when I graduated from uh, Isaiah Supeo. And then before ESA, so after all that, I joined the Directorate General of Armament. Uh, it's a part of the French Army. Uh, I, um, my first position was to be assigned in the Air Force. Uh, there I graduated uh, as a fighter pilot but not to become a combat pilot, but to have a better understanding of fighter pilot needs, to have a hands-on experience of what is good for them in order to better serve their uh, needs uh, in the Rafale program. And that's what I'm doing now, what I've been doing for the past three years, uh, working in the Rafale team in order to try to ameliorate and uh, contribute to this uh, amazing uh, piece of engineering. I felt uh, hugely privileged about this uh, because, you know, there were so many applicants uh, right from the beginning uh, during this whole selection process that uh, um, lasted for a year and a half. Uh, I was lucky enough to meet uh, a lot of them and I was impressed by all the backgrounds, the very uh, incredible personalities that I have met along the way. And so I really feel uh, humbled and privileged to be selected in the end. And it's. Uh, I feel compelled to do my best uh, for the past uh, next uh, month and year um, uh, to, to contribute as much as I can to the space program within ESA. <clears throat> I think that uh, what fascinates me is that I am really optimistic. I, I really have the belief that it's in that direction that we must go, that we must tear the pot in order to change a lot of things in our current life. There are a lot of problems going on on Earth. And I really think that it's with science, with exploration, that we will find solutions on the long term. I really truly believe so, and that's the reason why I want to be a part of it. Uh, no matter the, I would say, the, the shape of this contribution, I want to be a part of this new space era that is beginning, contribute to exploration, contribute to the ability to bring back a lot of uh, innovations, a lot of uh, tools, a lot of science from space back to Earth for the benefit of all.
yes, I think that's a very good uh, uh, horse to bet on, really. Uh, if you want to, to go into space and to be selected, uh, I think that uh, science is a key to a lot of things, a lot of problems that we have at the moment. It's the ability to think clearly, uh, calmly, to uh, correlate facts, to understand how things work. I really think it's uh, one of the key answers to a lot of our problems. So I would encourage them uh, to continue in that direction and not to count their efforts and to aim as high as possible. My name is Amelie Schönenwald and I'm from Germany. When I was a kid, um, I had this window going up to the sky and every time I was lying in bed, I could see the stars and I always wondered what was out there. So I had a fascination for the stars, the universe and as a matter of fact of science because science was the only thing that could explain everything around it. And as one night, uh, my mom woke me up in the middle of the night to show me Comet Hale-Bopp. And this was the moment when I knew I wanted to become an astronaut because it sparked my enjoyment and my passion for science and the universe. I grew up in Bavaria and I studied at the Technical University of Munich. I did biochemistry, industrial biotechnology, biotechnology, and I did a PhD in integrative structural bio biology. And uh, from this experience, I learned a lot about science and academia, but I wanted to complement it as well with the real world outside of academia. That's why I did an MBA. And the MBA led me into the corporate world where I learned about teamwork and how important it is to work together and to face challenges and to overcome challenges together. In my free time, I really love, love to be outside and be in nature. That's why I love scuba diving, I love mountaineering, and sometimes I even do jungle explorations and also cave explorations. So this one day I got a call by the director general and it was a French number which called on my phone and I rarely get phone calls on my private phone. <laughs> so I was really excited. Will they pick me? Are they calling to kick me out? And uh, the time he said I was in, I was just very excited. But the thing is, I've been preparing for this moment ever since I applied. So it's been one and a half years of a journey of mentally preparing for this moment. And now I'm here and I'm incredibly happy and humbled to have been through this entire journey and now be here with other amazing people. So thank you, Isa. So these times are very exciting. Um, we have had a past of uh, humans going from the Stone Age to where we are at the moment, but there are so many more things to explore in the future. And I'm incredibly humbled and fascinated by the idea that I can be part of uh, this team going towards a better future and contribute as much as I can with my skill set and hopefully acquire more skills from even more talented people uh, than those people I have already come across. And I hope that together with this team, we can shape a better future and inspire future generations. My message to young people is that they can achieve anything, anything they're passionate about, if they really want and if they're willing to work hard for it. Uh, my name is Marco Sieber and I'm from Switzerland. Well, of course, it was already a dream as a child. I think uh, every child has this fascination for space. I had books and I played with my brother to build a rocket. Um, and then this fascination never really um, faded away, but I uh, somehow forgot a bit about, about it. And um, then in, in a few uh, years, um, somehow I just, ima uh, just realized that it's possible to actually become an astronaut as an European citizen. Um, and so I informed myself, uh, uh, checked when might be the next application period and um, yeah, so I was very uh, fond of the idea of becoming one. It's just such a combination of all the technical things of aviation, of um, earth, um, planetary science. Um, so it's a really huge um, combination of all the specialties and technology and I really like that.
Uh, yeah, my background is um, I grew up in Switzerland in a small town close to the Emmental, maybe you know it from, from the cheese. Um, then I um, moved to, to Bern, the capital city in Switzerland, and studied there and mainly worked, uh, worked afterwards as a medical doctor um, close to Bern, but also a bit um, with uh, the army in uh, Kosovo and also some other um, projects uh, abroad. And um, then I started training as an emergency medical doctor in, in helicopter rescue, which I still really much love doing. And um, also uh, one and a half years ago, I started training as a urologist um, because of the really interesting uh, surgical and uh, uh, yeah, it's a really uh, technical profession. So I very much like that. Ad otherwise, my uh, hobbies are a lot with uh, aerial sports like paragliding, um, skydiving, flying small, small airplanes, and um, that's something I enjoy during my free time. How did it feel when I found out that I um, become part of the astronaut class? That was a very uh, intense moment and also felt quite unreal because it was something I was dreaming of um, almost my whole life and especially the last one and a half years uh, with the, the whole selection process uh, you were always working towards this goal which now came here and it's still um, a bit unbelievable and uh, also quite uh, adventurous because you don't know what uh, well you, you don't really have a good idea what's coming next so it's really really exciting. Where do I see myself in uh, this whole human exploration program and where does it go? Uh, I think it's a very interesting time at the moment with uh, the, you know, the beginning of the Artemis program. And um, it's, uh, it's also a bit a question of um, uh, what the development of ESA will be, uh, what are the financial opportunities, what are the politics. So that will be very interesting how it will develop. Um, for me, I hope I could be part of um, at least some missions to low Earth orbit. Or, I mean, what's really, really fascinating is uh, the missions to the Moon that uh, will start probably pretty soon with uh, humans. And I think that's um, yeah, something that really almost every child dreams of to be walking on the Moon. And, uh, I mean, as an astronaut, you really have an important role of, uh, first of all, safety and performing experiments and uh, working with all the hardware, being by yourself, uh, dealing with, with, uh, un, uh, with unknown situations. So I think that's really all it's about, uh, being an astronaut, about the, uh, the res responsibility and um, also a bit uh, an adventure. So what uh, advice would I give to young people interested in space or in, uh, in science? I think you just should do what, uh, what fascinates you, what, what you like. If, you, if you're interested in space, then uh, uh, there's a lot of different possibilities to, to get there. I mean, if you look at this astronaut class, there are very um, different backgrounds from medicine to aviation, science. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to get into. I think it's important that you do what you what you like and what you're interested in, and that you always keep your um, keep your eyes open and also think that it's possible and not uh, not just uh, think well I I never make it so I mean I didn't think I make it but uh, yeah then it worked out differently so uh, um, I think you just you should just uh, persevere and uh, follow what you like and follow your your instincts. Uh, my name is uh, Aleš Svoboda. I come from the Czech Republic. Well, I've always been fascinated by, by space ever since I was a small child. It's uh, been basically my, uh, my uh, uh, lifelong ambition to become an astronaut. And I see it as a logical continuation of my career as, a, as an Air Force pilot, as, in, as a fighter pilot. Uh, I'm a fighter pilot in the Czech Air Force. I've been flying uh, high-performance aircraft uh, for about 14 years, uh, since 2008. 
I forgot about 1500 flight hours and uh, primarily on uh, the grip and fighter aircraft. I come from Brno uh, in the Czech Republic, which is the second largest uh, city in the Czech Republic. Uh, I've got uh, two master's degrees, uh, one from the University of Defense uh, where I studied military technology and the other one from University in Pardubice where I studied uh, transport engineering and I also got a PhD in aircraft and rocket uh, technology. Uh, aviation is my greatest hobby and I also like to keep myself fit by running or occasionally working out. Well, I was uh, extremely honored and very happy and uh, uh, on, the other, on the other hand also very humbled because uh, I haven't done anything yet apart from uh, the selection itself and there's a lot of work that's, uh, that's uh, lying ahead. Uh, well, uh, I've uh, always been excited about the European vision of going beyond low Earth orbit and establishing a, a presence uh, around the Moon and on the lunar surface potentially and uh, being vitally involved in the, in the Gateway and Artemis programs. Well, I would say that uh, no, ma no matter what uh, the odds are, it is uh, always important to do your best and, uh, and to shoot for your dreams. My name is Sławo Szuznański and I'm from Poland. It's an interesting question. I think space was very close to my heart from when I was a little kid. I was born the 12th of April that is an international day of the human spaceflight and the anniversary, anniversary of when Gagarin was in space. So for my birthday every single year my mom was wishing me happy cosmonaut day back in Poland. So I think it was very close to, to, to my heart and I knew I would like to build my career in this domain. That's why I have chosen my PhD in building space systems and then I continued and built my profile, hoping that I would be able to apply to ESA. I thought about uh, the astronaut program already in 2008. On the other hand, I was too young. As well, Poland was not a full member state back then, so I was not eligible to apply. And it's been a long couple of years, 13, 14 years for, until the next selection. And uh, when it came up, I knew I was, uh, I was going to apply and try my chances. Okay, so I grew up in Poland, in Łódź, um, and I was born there and until I started studying. And I started studying in the Technical University of Łódź uh, as an in studies for engineering, telecommunications and uh, electronics. And then I, during my studies I moved to to France to do my diploma. I had a chance to, to do a double diploma in between the French and the Polish school. Me personally, I'm always a very active person and sports was very, very close to my life. Um, in general, when I was growing up uh, as a teenager, I was in the sailing national team of Poland and participating in Polish regatta mostly as well as internationally which I still continue. Um, in Geneva, we have a big lake where I currently live. I teach sailing. I participate in different regattas as well. So this is one part of, uh, of my sports life. And the second part is, it's, has always been the mountains. So going to high mountains, climbing, hiking, and reaching the peaks in Europe or outside, which was always uh, interesting for me to explore. So, I uh, am still currently at CERN. CERN is a European organization for nuclear research. What we do, we have particle accelerators and we are a, a research lab in physics, in particle physics. We run big accelerators and my part at CERN, let's say I have two main roles. One role is I build systems that control our infrastructure. And my second role is I operate these accelerators as, for example, the, the Large Hadron Collider, the LHC, uh, on a daily basis, 24-7, to deliver physics to different institutes and physicists uh, all across the world. So I, I was working in the French industry doing my PhD, 
was always very close to space applications. And then, after finishing my PhD, I moved to CERN on a postdoctoral position. So since the interviews, I was, I was waiting for, for the news and as for each of the stages. And one day, the Director General, Josef Ashbacher, called me on my phone and invited me to be one of the uh, next uh, astronaut poll, reserve or career astronaut. So that was extremely exciting. I think it's been exciting ten, last 10 years already with the, this massive push and developing of uh, technology in space, mostly on low, low Earth orbit. And now I think these are very exciting times coming because knowing the Artemis project and putting back people on the moon that is, that is coming in the next uh, five to 10 years, this is extremely exciting. So going towards the moon and having again the moon landing and potentially a permanent presence of humans bio Leo, it's something that um, was done before. On the other hand, now we have these big ambitions to have this per per permanent presence. Being able to go beyond the moon, it's uh, for the moment just um, in the face of dreams. But on the other hand, I think we are explorers. We go towards the moon and then potentially beyond. So let's see what the future brings. So as, as I said, I am an explorer. I like going to the mountains and I like exploring uh, different peaks. And I have this aptitude for difficult conditions and definitely going beyond low, low Earth orbit, it speaks to my core values and what I would like to do. So first of all, um, build knowledge and do what you like doing. When you follow your dreams and you're passionate about something, it's you do not see the time flying by and you build this knowledge and you move forward extremely fast. So just do it, invest in your dreams, build knowledge and don't be afraid of realizing your dreams. My name is Mark Swant and I'm from Sweden. I applied to become an astronaut because I love exploration and I want to reach far out into the unknown. I think that's a good way of uh, learning about things we don't know that we want to learn about. So I have a, a military background. Uh, I started out uh, my conscript time in the Swedish Army as an airborne ranger. After that I uh, went uh, more towards the civilian and studied uh, um, for a master in, uh, in electrical engineering. Uh, from that, I shifted back to the military uh, to become a fighter pilot. Uh, after having done that for about 10 years, uh, I became a test pilot and then started to work uh, in the aerospace industry, um, developing and testing new aircraft. And uh, now I'm the chief test pilot uh, at Saab. Well, I have a lot of hobbies. Uh, I just need to find time for them. Uh, what I love to do is being outdoors, for instance. Uh, and also, I like physical training. Uh, also like to work with my hands, building things in wood and, and metal. And uh, actually anything creative that goes for programming and, and creating software as well. So. I felt uh, very happy and honored, uh, honestly. I met so many really good candidates throughout this process and uh, yeah, just pure joy. When it comes to human space exploration, I'm uh, really excited because of the challenge and the difficulties of making an, a spacecraft uh, work and get as far as you want it uh, to go. Uh, and my part of that uh, might be uh, uh, to bring in knowledge from the, uh, from the aerospace industry where I've been doing a lot of testing and, and building knowledge for a bunch of years. And uh, I want to uh, help uh, Europe to stay on that path to create an autonomous capability to uh, put humans in space. Keep your uh, passion uh, for, uh, for space and for science. Uh, science is beautiful and, uh, and uh, it's so important uh, for, for us to uh, 
to learn new things and uh, and uh, keep on being curious and everything that you want to find out just keep on getting that information and keep progress for humankind going. My name is Nicola Winter and I'm from Germany. I think everything about space is fascinating. It's the final frontier for humanity. I think about 500 years ago, I would have been a sea explorer and tried to discover America. Now it's time to discover the stars. So I applied to be an astronaut. I grew up on the outskirts of Munich in southern Germany. I joined the Air Force when I was 19 years old as a fighter pilot. I flew the Tornado and the Eurofighters, the two big European fighter aircraft. I'm an aerospace engineer and a paramedic. And before ESA, I worked at the DLR as a researcher. I went straight into being a fighter pilot, so I joined the Air Force at 19. I, of course, had to do basic training, I had to do officer school, and then at 21, I got to fly my first military aircraft, and at 22, my first combat aircraft. I would say I have no hobbies at all. My husband thinks everything is a hobby, but I'm getting a PhD in space science from a university in the US. I really like to work as a paramedic, um, and we really like to be an adventurous, outdoorsy family. So we like skiing, we like hiking. Um, before I had a family, I really liked long distance bike riding. So 30 days on the bike, just going from Northern to Southern Europe. Being a part of this pool of candidates is a very, very humbling, very exciting um, opportunity and thing to do because there's 22,000 people applied, right? Many, many of them would be very well qualified astronauts. Many great biographies and, and exciting adventures. And to be one of the chosen few to sit here feels very surreal, as I said, very humbling. And I'm just glad to be here. I think it's a really, really exciting time in, in space exploration and human space exploration because we decided to go back to the moon and try to go further. And I really want to be an astronaut in this pioneering spirit, right? Like adventure and exploration. So for me, this is the perfect time. And to be able to maybe, maybe one day play a little tiny part in this big wheel and maybe contribute just a little bit would be the biggest honor of my life and very, very fulfilling. I think it's, especially if you're young, it's such an exciting time because in their lifetime, humanity will reach Mars and will see, you know, what else is out there and how far we can go and anybody can contribute. So if you do science, if you do math or engineering, we even need the people that do the business and that do the marketing. I think it's really, really worth it. And you might not be able to do everything you ever dreamed of, but you're definitely able to do something. And that is worth it all.